This is the true story of one season in the life of a professional football team. It's about the 1985 Tampa Bay Bandits of the United States Football League and about the remarkable man who created them. It's also a story about a nation's traditions and rituals. A story about America's heroes. when we see these young men at this table. I'll tell you something, you young men. It'll go by so fast you won't even know it. There are so many people in this world that face each day with such bravery and with their head held high and walk up to us and give us something and don't take. So you've got to do it now. You've got to do it now. And when the coach makes that speech that everybody thinks is so silly and says, this could be the last football game you'll ever play in your life, play it like it's the last football game you ever played in your life. I figure, you know what I figure? No. I figure the best scouting that you can do is to talk to guys on your own team who played at college with the guys you're looking at. Forget the damn computer. Forget all the bullshit when all those NFL scouts decide what they want and they all say the same thing because they're all protecting their ass and they're protecting their jobs. The best thing that I can do as an owner is to talk to you who went to Tennessee to find about guys you and screw all the rest of those assholes. I hear that. Nobody in life does well unless they're a winner. You gotta be a damn winner. Hell yeah. Here's the winning. Toast to that. Toast to winning. I just wanna make a toast. I wanna make a toast. Go ahead, Peacock. And this is beyond, this is all bullshit aside. I just wanna to, to a long I wanna make a toast. I wanna make a toast to John Bassett. To a long and healthy life and his illness and all the things wrong with him right now come to an end. And he lives about 100 more years with the rest of us, and we can play football with him forever. To you, John. Yeah, I'll tell you that. You know that right now. Thank you. Right on, see 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 you. Like a lot of people, I always wanted to be a professional football player. But after a knee injury in college, I had to find myself another career. Shit. Then I met John Bassett and became a part owner of the Tampa Bay Bandits of the USFL. Back in 1985, there was nothing like bandit ball. All right, let's everybody bring it on up. Bring it on up here in the middle. Come on in, grab a hand. I'll be done. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day and every day of bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. All right, let's put it in here, everybody. Come on, right, baby. Come on, guys. Come on. We play 60 minutes of what?
time I got involved with this team, there was never a doubt about who was running the show. Mr. John F. Bassett, the P.T. Barnum of the Bandits. Don't get me wrong, I loved this team, and I had a real stake in how they did. But John did just about everything for the Bandits, but block and tackle. When I created something with the Tampa Bay Bandits, I created the Tampa Bay Bandits, and to this point, it's worked. I mean, I named the team, I picked the stadium, got the investors, named the team, picked the colors, hired the coach, got us, you know, the, the players. Then, I mean, I put the package, I published the book. You know, now whether people like the book or not. There's a football tradition of giving game balls to the guys who played the best. Gary Anderson's going to get it. Okay, Gary. But one time the bandits put a little spin on that old ritual. A special game ball for the owner who's been sick a little bit lately. Glad to have him with us, John. All right, one o'clock tomorrow, one o'clock over there. The whole team knew that John was sick, but no one knew what was wrong with him. So in that 85 season, there'd be something else to worry about besides winning and losing. <laughs> you just can't take out two or three pieces of paper and write down what the game plan is. That's, you know, it's, it's the unknown that is the... Uh, the, the scary factor. Scary is probably not the right word, but it's the unknown. But this is getting ahead of the story. If we go back to the start of the 85 season, it seemed like any other. We had ourselves a hell of a team, and we thought we had a chance to win it all. You gonna leave me all whooped up like that? And John, well, John was his usual fiery self. Determined to run the bandits just a little bit differently than your typical team owner. America's right to have something done properly. America's sick and tired of overpaid, drugged up, fucking athletes and, and, and $20 tickets to go to sporting events and union hassles and what have you. Why do you think television ratings are off? Why do you think people don't go anymore? They're sick of it. Okay, real quickly here, Neil. Let's play hard. Play full speed. Remember, you're going against your teammates. The first order of business in any football season is cutting down the roster. There were 90 guys in trading camp, and only 45 would get to call themselves bandits. The others would be waived, and for many of them, it would be a rude awakening. For some, the end of a lifelong dream. You think anybody pick this group up? Yeah. We got six that'll go on the wire. Well, as I understand it, the total active roster is going to be 45. There were eight bandit coaches, and every day after practice, they'd get together and talk about who looked good and who they'd seen enough of. It was a little tense in there, because the coaches knew that careers were hanging in the balance. I want to make a trade, I'm telling you. I'm... Who, who's another inside you think has made the team? The office has made the ball club? Right now, he's... I got to go with him. How about McAllister? Where's he at? In this right, list. Now. There's no difference between those two? Not very little. They'll both knock the shit out of you. But Tony made out last the whole year. It's a red ass world. Don't you ever remember it? Don't you ever remember it? Bandit's head coach was Steve Spurrier, the only Florida Gator to win the Heisman Trophy. Steve was the son of a preacher, but his chapel was the gridiron. Here's what I tell him. Uh, I said, fellas, first of all, if you're a good player, play hard, keep your nose clean, give good effort. I said, there's a chance you can, you can continue making a living out of football, which is a, a pretty good life for most of us. All you need to do is get one of those real jobs sometime to realize how good we had it. <laughs> Z's print draw weak, Z motion, twin, print draw weak. 
Football practice may seem like drudgery, but when you're trying to make a ball club, one screw up can mean curtains. How can we run double Sally when we're in base? Hey, listen, have we ever run double Sally blitz in base defense? No, but what I'm saying, wait a minute, have we? No, have we? No, we haven't. Okay, then we should never call it. We've got X amount of players. We know their limitations by now. We don't, we're not doing our job. We're looking for hungry, physical guys. Trying to be objective, I don't see that the guy accomplishes a damn thing. I think you could go out on the street and get a guy and line him up. But I'll tell you what, and Joe Average college boy, he's like my ass. He's just a tough, hard-nosed son of a bitch. Who do I trust? No, no, no. Who do I trust? And I don't trust The thing that I saw on him, he is so stiff that he ends up in a awkward Hey, Nobody's made any more tackles than Pete Kuharchi. He know the one reason you played Pete because I remember it very distinctly because you were physical. You'd run up the field, and knock the shit out of people, and that's what defense is all about. I just want you to, we're going we're gonna to have to waive you. And the reason we're going to have to waive you is not that you're not a good football player. You're a pretty good football player. <clears throat> you know, this, this doesn't mean you can't play for somebody. I believe you can. Of course, whether you do or not is, is up to you. And we're going to help you to try to make that happen because that's the way our organization works. A couple of things I, I'd like to say to you. First is, you're a fine young man and a, a good kid, and you're not a bad football player. That's not the reason that, that you're getting waived here. I think you have a chance to play somewhere, and you've been a good kid, and we try to help those young men that, that are good kids, and of course you, you are that. And you're a fine young man, and, uh, and I hope things work out for you, and I know they will. Okay. okay. You got your degree? No, I don't. That's something that I That's the first thing you need to do. Yeah. Like they say, fear is a great motivator. It's amazing how hard guys can work when their jobs are on the line. Everyone likes to be in the team picture. It gives you something to put on the mantle. And it means you made the ball club. It also means that training camp is over and it's time to get ready for the season. For Chuck Pitcock, fun-loving lineman for the Bandits, it meant a little something more. 
there's a lot of pressure on us as, as athletes, you know. And for, let's say, you know, not too many people go up to the guy at the grocery store, you know, and say, hey, I want to get your autograph. You're one, you know, I, I look up to you every day, you know, my kids love you and all this. Well, as football players and being in the limelight and being on television, being in movies and all this good stuff, you know, some we have a, a following, you know, and, and children and, and the youth of America at, a, at some point collectively, you know, see something in us that they want to beat. And then there was the bandit's biggest lineman, Nathaniel Newton. As an old running back, I used to look for guys like Nate to hide behind. The only trouble was the bandits figured Big Nate didn't have to be quite as big as he was. And they tried to get him to shed a few pounds. Hard day to day, boy. Every week, Big Nate had to weigh in. For every pound, he weighed over 300, and it would cost him $10. Shit. Stay on that, Stay on that. I made it, dude. I'm 68. I'm trimmed today. 65 next week. Oh, man. I got to eat lunch, coach. You're 65 next week. Hey. You make it pretty. Don't worry about it. All right, here we go, John. I'm ready. Two hundred for John. All right, we're waiting for the one and only. Yo, where's he at? Yeah. Hey, Pitt, have you seen Nate? Yeah. He was like 295 in the offseason, and then Christmas hit him. <laughs> he gained about 20 pounds. Where's Big Nate? Is he on his way? 124. Gotta watch it. You're on that scale, Nate. We're waiting for you. What is it? 26. You want to know? Because I was eating more, more than Take your foot off that scale, Leslie. Oh, don't, that scared me too, Leslie. <laughs> All right, Nate, we're waiting on you. Last one. Kill him, Nate. He's awesome. Think lean. Think lean. 313. Exactly. 313. What is your. Sabrina, Susan, here. I need you to face this way for your cuts. Okay, stand in your formation. <clears throat> Relax. Be your beautiful self. Smile.
Brenda, I really think I'm going to have to cut you. Your style is coming. It's coming along, and you're, you're gaining confidence as you go along. But what I'm talking about is like your arms are here, and everybody else is doing the big thing. When you do the punch, it's got to be harder. Okay? Got to practice on it? Please, yes. She's a doll. <laughs> See, she offers to help on the sides. Okay. Captains, did you all go over the cheers with them? I don't have time. Yes, Debbie. Anybody and everybody that you all know, get them to go to the game. We need lots of support and we need to be up and making good games. I think the main thing that you all need to remember is that, remember that whenever we are performing at a game, that you're not fooling those people at all. It has to be for real. What you do is for real. Finally, opening night for Bandit Ball. Loud, clear, decisive, whatever you call, can't be wrong. Yeah, so he's already Once you call it, it's I a call. I just go ahead on right it's my Well, what you should do, it. normally if you get one of those quick motions like that, then you just say, switch it, Charlie, because that back ain't on. The switch call ain't going to shift to him. Okay. Come on now, Jeff. All right, Zachariah, let's go, buddy. Let's go, Mike. Let's have a good one, buddy. Hey, B, let's go, buddy. Let's go, Jerry. Let's stay down there, guys. Let's see. Spencey? Light. Let's go now. Light and look. Play, play smart. Play Jolene? Smart. Let's go now. Ricky? Let's go, Bunny? All right, Gary? This Jackie's going to kill me because I don't know how to do plan five. You just got to show me she's done. Gary, she should know my name. I don't know. She missed last practice. I know. And it's, I mean, it's right? like the third practice, and she's like, Karen? How long have you been a head dancer, Karen? Well, <laughs> it's two <laughs> Five every week, right? Four, five, six, seven, eight. Wait a minute. Go from there. Oh, then you're going. Oh, okay. See, I'm going to get in her car. I'm going to fuck up. She's going to be like, Karen, do we have to draw you a map? I'm going to be like, no. All right, what are we going to play tonight? What? Let's go. Introducing Catholic Hall Sun Dancer. Ball is back on the air. Good evening and welcome to the start of this third spring season as John Bassett's Bandits get set to tee it up. And all eyes are on Eric E.T. Trevelyan, the fans' favorite. He's trying to come back from that crippling foot injury. Let's go! Let's go! A big crowd, well in excess of 40,000, is on hand tonight, and the Bandits are heavy favorites. Round 90! Hut, hut! There he is, John. There he is. He's got it. Get him, baby. All right, here we go. Let's go play. Keep him down there. Come on. He's pass complete. Let's go. E.T. Eric Trevelyan. That's our best ball. First down. Bandit. That's our best shot. I tackled him. This is 
is our locker room. Pretty nice, huh? We'll probably be here in a couple of we, years. Uh, we didn't play very well, but we, we played good enough to win. But uh, we got to get a lot better, man, if we're going we're gonna to challenge. You see Daddy get hurt? A long way to go. Gotta get oh, you weren't even watching, were you? Tomorrow, 1 o'clock at the, at the West Shore. We'll meet up there and uh, and watch the film from there after that and then work out Sunday afternoon like we normally do. So uh, don't get in any trouble tonight, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Check with your coaches before you leave. Now, I've known some tough film critics, but these guys review them forward and backwards. AJ, AJ's going to, he's going up full back, all right? Where's the double salad blitz? Combination of... Combination of wheel steamer, right? Of course, no film holds everyone's attention. When the linemen need a diversion, it was time for a little walk football. And in case you were wondering, they just made up the rules as they went along. No, you can't do this. You can't run. You gotta walk. That's why it's called walk touch. Listen up. He's got something real important he needs to talk to us about. I've been uh, speaking with Mr. Bassett, and uh, I'm talking to you today to clear the air on something that's very important to our team. Um, as some of you know his condition, some of you don't, I'd like to explain, and I think it'll be uh, important as a team. Well, I came to just get a medical. The doctor gave me the medical. He said I was healthy as hell. And he said, uh, well, by the way, he said, uh, I think I'll send you to get a CAT scan. About 10 to 1 would be anything. No, not 10 to 1, 20 to 1. Bang, came up. This is kind of an insidious sort of thing. And then you get something out of your head. You know? I mean, you get something the matter with a car, you go in, they check the thing, they fix a wire, they do this, that, the other thing. The brain, it's not that way. Geez, you go in, it seems to. I don't know. I'm not a goddamn doctor. About five weeks ago, um, Mr. Bassett uh, was very ill, and uh, he went to Toronto for tests, and while in Toronto, uh, it was discovered that he had uh, two brain tumors. He has subsequently had radiation treatment on those brain tumors. This is your last one. Dude. Yeah, I know. For a while, maybe. I don't know. Oh. People come back sometimes, don't they? I mean, sometimes. That's up to the doctors. Two big blasts already. Give me a big one today. It's the third one. And they take a look at it in two or three months and see if it worked or not. How come I haven't lost my hair yet? It usually takes two weeks, Mr. Bassett. It's been two weeks. This is two weeks. Yeah, well, two weeks after we have finished. After you've finished? All of the treatments. He uh, feels that uh, he doesn't want any sympathy, and uh, he wants us as a team to treat him the same way. He wants us to encourage him and to support him, and the ones that know Mr. Bassett know that he's a fighter and that uh, he's going to challenge this the way it should be challenged. Slippery years. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies, thank you. Okay. I'm going to ask John Reeves to pray for Mr. Bassett, and maybe we can all join in. Father, as a team, we unite our faith in a prayer of faith for John Bassett that you would heal him, Lord. That with long life will you satisfy him and show him your salvation, Lord God. Amen. You know, some guy's telling you to go to California. Some guy's telling you to go to Montreal. Some guy's telling you to eat carrots. Somebody else is telling you to eat 10,000 vitamin C's every 15 minutes. Somebody else is telling you to have a 
radiation treatment. Somebody else is telling you to get out of your businesses and remove the pressure. Somebody else is telling you the studies show that the angrier you are, the better your chance to recover. Nobody knows. And this, it generally will lead to this. And so far, you've done just that. For the most part, we've had few errors, a couple of little minor breakdowns, but overall, extremely good. They're hooping and hollering over there a little bit. They're hooping and hollering more than we are. I don't know what that means. I've seen it not mean anything, and I've seen it mean things. So that's, that's immaterial as far as I'm concerned. It's, it's how we go out there and play. But we're, we're a better football team than these guys. It would be a shame to come up here and let those guys beat us just because maybe they wanted it a little bit more than us. You know, getting after their ass real good. That's what we got to do to win the game. So let's start getting excited. We got a chance to show bandit ball to the whole country. Great opportunity for us, man. Great opportunity to go out there and have some fun today, okay? All right, let's get going. All right, get after it. All right, we're going to play 60 minutes away. Bandit ball! Bandit ball! Bandit ball! At quarterback, number seven from Florida, John Reed. Second Corinthians 3.18. Beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image, image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord, the Spirit. Is that right? Yeah. Well, we all know about John's testimony. Well, he was addicted to alcohol and to drugs and... Uh, you know, came close to killing himself, and then his whole life was turned around. I could sense from the very beginning when I started using drugs that uh, there was something really wrong with it because I couldn't quit every day. I woke up and got high, and I began to get in trouble, car wrecks, fights, and uh, there were affidavits filed against me to have me committed, claiming I was insane. I was strung out on drugs and needed to be committed for observation. Head coach Steve Spurrier and the rest of your Tampa Bay Bandit. I had shakes and fears and, you know, I'd be up at 6 a.m. in the morning, just couldn't sleep and just going cuckoo out of my mind and I'd cry out to God, please just let me get to sleep. I won't do it tomorrow. And finally I'd have some peace and get to get to sleep, but then the next day I'd get right back out and start and go over to find a pusher somewhere to sell me some more. Here I was snorting, you know, a quarter ounce or, or sometimes an eighth of an ounce of cocaine a day and taking two or three quaaludes and drinking. At the same time, it's amazing that I'm alive, but uh, God had mercy on me had, and kept me alive and uh, for a purpose, I think, to let other people know there's hope. Having John Bassett around, considering his condition, was an inspiration to the Bandits, and the team was playing better than ever. I was amazed at how well the guys had pulled together. As far as I was concerned, we were as good as anybody in the USFL. But by mid-season, there was yet another concern, the future of the league. Tampa Bay Bandits, who was one of the founders of this USFL. The man has knows something about putting football teams and football leagues together. John, I know that you have been a quite outspoken advocate of maintaining a springtime schedule for the USFL. Yes, I have. And I think we have the players, I think we have the product, and I believe that we have the season. And uh, you know, I've, I've never felt better about the league than I do right now. Great. How's your back swing? My back swing is bad. <laughs> but I look forward to playing with you. All right, John, nice to see you. Thank you so All much. best wishes for you. Thank you so much, my friend. John Bassett, the principal owner of the Tampa Bay Bandits. Believing for a miracle for Mr. Bassett, you know, that he'll be completely healed and have a long life, and uh, we prayed about that. One of the um, questions in this uh, study guide is how Christians suffer. And uh, the question keeps coming back to me is how can a football player suffer?
a big league play there. Bandits were in first place now, and John Reeves made no secret of how much he was enjoying it. Meanwhile, the linemen were having their own private celebration. Four sandwiches. I want one whole can. You got three burgers ahead of everybody else. Kool-Aid. 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 Kool-Aid.
Well, they say you got six, you know, they say you got six months to two years. That's what they told me. That's a, you know, that ain't much time on one hand, but it's a lot of time on the other hand. And I can be wrong. Christ. I got a lot of friends, and since the word is good, I must have got calls from all my buddies, and all they're doing is telling you about all their friends that are headed and elected. If you knew John, you weren't surprised to see him still out there stalking the sidelines. You see, John only knew one way to live life to the fullest. To him, every bandit's game was a major event. I was on him like a blanket that time. Great play, coach. Amen. Come on in there, Willie. Off first down, Bradley wants to throw. Get Pressure coming by Alonzo Johnson. He'll be saved. To John, putting out a football team wasn't enough. Bandit ball was a three-ring circus, and John Bassett was the ringmaster. I bet my daughter, Carla, you know, the tennis player, I said, honey, bet you 10 bucks we score. Well, we have my close, there's 47 seconds left. She says, I can't bet. I says, why not? She says, I can't bet against the bandits. I said, that's right, that's great. But I'll give you 10 bucks because we're going to score. Two plays later. Just words from Mr. John Bassett. He says, go on it, give it away. So here we go. A million dollar Monday night madness. Where's Mr. Bassett? He's right over here. John Bassett. Here you go. So somebody here tonight is going to become a millionaire. And we're going to find out where that millionaire is sitting right now. The biggest all right, you gotta keep the pressure on them, man. I'll guarantee you they're coming after us this next half. Some millionaire up there. That possible blue 30, nannies, possible 89. Blue 32, remember? Now, don't move till you hear the blue and the red. Where are you? Seat number 15. You Sixty-some thousand came that night to see the bandits. At least in Tampa, spring football was a smash. Bandit left, 87, one yard, Z. Hey, John! 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 Three, on three. Hut! Hut! Dropping back to throw on third and long as Reeves under pressure throws toward the end zone. Ball is bad. It's picked up by Trevelyan. Touchdown. That's That's ball is more of a front in reality. It's something you see Saturday night, Sunday afternoon, on TV, at the stadium. It's not so much what goes on behind the scenes. Bandit ball is supposed to be a concern for everybody across the board, helping one another out. I, know it's, I wouldn't say dissension, but it's like an uneasiness. It's like an uneasiness because you can turn from a hero today to the goat tomorrow to back to the hero. But you're the same person. Tony Samuels is here to see the trainer. Thank you. I think it's just too much. I think it's just too much work, too much worrying about things that aren't worth worrying about. Well, I'm going to smell the roses. I'm not going to do what I don't want to do. 
screw it. Start thinking about, you know, my family and myself. Nobody said get your butt out there and play. Nobody said you got to play. Everything was on you. No one forced you in those games. Tony, do you think you can play? Yes, I have to play because I have to get a job. I right. want to play. I'm good enough to play. Okay, I want you to wear this pad so that we can give you a little protection. Fine with me, and you played. Now, am I to blame because you wanted to play and you played? I'm not. I'm not. I'm Who not pushed you over to, the cliff? Not me. I'm not me. trying to place any blame, but I mean, but yes, you, you said, are. You're very blameful. Not, you know, you trying to tell me that I'm trying to take something from somebody for what? I don't look. I don't like being in pain. You think I like? Holding my arm, walking around, people looking at me like I'm crazy. I'm holding my arm close to my body. Hell, I don't like that. And then you sit here and tell me that to me it seemed like you trying to you trying to get something. Bullshit. The only thing I'm trying to do is find out what the hell happened to my shoulder and why it's taking so long to get the damn thing settled. Okay. Don't leave, Tony. Let's, let's talk some This more. knot here is a calcium deposit that formed over it. This bone here is fused on top of the other one mm -hmm. where, you know, it's giving me a lot of pain. And you can see the difference between the left shoulder and the right shoulder. Mm -hmm. And they virtually telling me that I, and there's nothing wrong with me. Mm -hmm. Hey, man, I need my money, man. I, I mean, I would have been working if, if my arm wouldn't have been fucked up. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. and I and I got bills to pay, man. I can't afford to sit on my ass and and they sitting around dilly dallying with their thumbs up their behind, and I can't get my money from them. They trying to avoid it right here, but man, they owe you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Your shoulder fucked up. I, I tell you what, Fred. Yeah. If I got a degree, I could be working somewhere right now. Yeah, but I, I mean, that. I can't go on somebody's job holding my arm like this, and I got to take pain pills, you know, for the pain. You Ain't know? nobody gonna have you like that, huh? Yeah. Shit, you walk the mile, you hold on like this here. Yeah. 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 Uh, check with me later. I call you. Yeah. You don't know me. And but I can't get my money from the bandits. Contact Mr. Bassett. I think Mr. Bassett talked to him. I think Mr. Bassett tried to be a fair man about it. Hey, you went out there, man, you tore your shoulder up, busted your shoulder up, man. And that's the only right thing to do, you know what I'm saying? Just give you a contract. You know, I don't think that's asking too much. Have we got the other x ray done? We just took it. Where? St. Joe's Hospital. And what's it show? There's no fracture. He has some old trauma to that area. Well, he's that means it could have happened before he came to us or since or any, anything? Yeah. So you're a veteran. Little... You're a vet. Yes. You're a veteran in the league. Right. Right. Yes, and and he hasn't been doing the treatment since he's been what? Got a second request. Opinion. He got a second opinion. Didn't follow the request of our doctor. So he has not been receiving treatment at all. Okay. So it's kind of hazy. And what's his salary? Uh, Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. And we're gonna give you. Well, I got. Uh, you I got, got a lot of bills too. You got a lot, how many bills you, you got? Uh, I need at least five thousand. Fine. Give him five thousand dollars and give him a thousand dollars a week for ten weeks, and you get better and see if you can't make a team in this league. Is that okay? Fifteen. The settlement's fifteen thousand. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. All right. You need. Well, I was gonna give you a thousand dollars a week for five weeks. Okay. Drop all the union baloney. Look after him, make him so that he has an opportunity to play next year. Give him five grand a day. Add in a thousand dollars a week for ten weeks. Is that okay? All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you, nice. buddy. Thank you. Put him under our doctors. Treat him as if he's one of our players. If you got any more problems or any more bullshit, come see me. Okay? Well, life is very simple. You know, that's my favorite thing. Life is very simple. People just complicate the shit out of it. E.T. Trevian was shaken up in the first half. Talking about him having possibly a... Just listen up a second back here, okay? That half's history. Some guys played great, some probably didn't play so good. Doesn't matter. One point ball game, so it's anybody's game right now. Everybody give it your best shot now, okay? Let's go out there and have some fun. When you pushed it, push the kneecap back. It was like killing me right in there. I'm telling y'all, y'all don't have to believe me. Something's the matter with it. The guy did not hit me there. He hit me up top. It ain't. He didn't hit it. He didn't kick it. He didn't do anything to bruise it. That hurts on the inside, right? We. The whole thing is is no. It feels like I can't move the thing. No ring no no huddle. Warbeck, you know we ain't never run it worth the shit against these guys. You're throwing the phone. I'm not afraid to throw it. Well, God, don't be so shaky. Shit, play the game. Fuck. You start wanting to run the ball, I'm putting him in. Take it easy, Chris.
Eric Trevelyan had been an all-league receiver and the Bandits' most popular player. But this season, he seemed distracted, unhappy even. Now he had himself a knee injury, the worst kind of nightmare for a guy who makes his living catching a football. No, John! No! John! Come on, John! Throw the ball when they're getting in there! It was a young guy. It really wasn't a good hit. You know, if he had drilled me or something like that, then fine, but... You never want to make somebody else's name for them, but he's a rookie guy getting paid big money, and it's like, well, yeah, I'm the guy that knocked E.T. out of the game. Going out there, looking back on the field and listening to the crowd and the crowd harassing me and this, that, and the other, I don't know, I'm kind of, I wouldn't say pissed off at the whole situation, just more like, well, my day's coming again. My day's coming again. It's the other knee now, and he, we're calling it a bruise till it shows up overnight, but he probably sprained the knee again. What about the last knee? When's he coming home? Like, it's going to make yards. Third and five. I want to go bandit left. He's now starting to snap off the ball out. a little better. You go Westby will be full go for another two, three weeks. Oh, that's bullshit. Got a torn muscle in there, John. All these assholes tearing muscles. Why the hell don't we stretch them properly? We are. You bullshit can't. we are. It's a long walk off that field when you lose, let me tell you. Worse still, this would be the last time John Bassett would be at a Bandits game. John's condition was growing more serious, and he was going back to Toronto for more treatments. The Bandits were going to have to stay in the race without John Bassett on the sidelines. Doing pretty good. Doing good. Pretty good. Hope, hope it's back to normal today. Yeah, should be fine this week. Great, great. Eric, I just got back from talking with John Bassett and have a few things to report to you on the contract. Dollar-wise, we're talking about 1.6 million over the course of the contract, which should stand you real well with uh, everybody else. You should be right on the top in the league. How was he looking? Goes. What was his status on his health? Because we've been hearing reports is. You know, he's sick, he's well, he doesn't know if he's going to live, or how does, is there any, anything in the contract that says if we sign this today and something happens to him tomorrow that it's valid or the league folds, you know, some way down the line because of his health or his, you know, leadership or whatever? Well, he looked pretty good today, Eric. He had seemed in pretty good spirits and was ready to go. We did discuss his health a little bit, and I don't really even know if he knows for sure. Catch the damn ball, coach. Piss, don't even want to play. Pass intended for Eric Trevelyan. He's just a little high. I don't know why he didn't try for it. He, next time he don't try for one, he'll be a son of a bitch. I've never seen any. Get him out. 
You gonna come back out and play with us or what? Fuck no, I tried to do that just then. Yes, fucking Jim. Fuck no, I told him that shit was hurt two weeks ago. You don't get no fucking treatment. They think I'm bullshit. Talk about Eric Cavillian. He's kind of a pain in the ass. I think he's gonna sell. Yeah, I don't think he lives in the real world. He's an excellent football player. Uh, he's a naive young man. He hasn't come to terms with what life is all about yet. You know, he's got a lot of passion in him, which is commendable, but, you know, he'll grow up. He could play, he doesn't want to play, he should play, he shouldn't play. He's preoccupied with his own personal future. He's getting bad counsel from you know, people. What are your thoughts? Well, basically, I've asked a trainer, I, you know, several times, and the doctor, just tell me, can he play or can he play? That's all I want to know. If he's physically able to play, then he's going to play. If, uh, if he's not, just tell me he can't play. And they say, well, he can do as much as he can, but if his knee starts bothering him, you should pull him out. You know, some guys can play with a little fluid in the knee, and some other guys say, you know, hey, coach, it bothers me a little bit. So if he's got fluid in his knee, you know, we might as well play the guys who are healthy because they're excellent players also. Now, he is supposed to be ready to play this week. Number 64 from Tulane, Chuck Hitchcock. And right guard, number 61 from Florida A&M, Daniel Newton. I'm definitely going to take care of my own future, and I'm looking to what they use a phrase is CYA, cover your ass. So um, I'm definitely covering mine as far as looking at uh, the potential of jumping down the line and keeping contacts open with the other league because um, you never know. Hut! Hut! The rest of the bandits, meanwhile, were just thinking about winning a football game. Without John Bassett around, the bandits had lost a little swagger. It was important to win one before they slid too far. Bandits had already lost to the New Jersey Generals once this season, so this had become kind of a grudge match. Buddy, fight them, yeah, man. They got a mix. What the hell's going on over there? You gotta be shitting me, you son of a. Catch a couple of TVs this week. Nah, I can't come out this week. Next I gotta week. have a note from my mom. I think we can make room for you back on the roster. Yeah. Maybe it was quick slip me into the wire. Yeah. <laughs> the guy is a cripple. I'm under the close scrutiny of Jim Russ as far as rehabilitation. Jim is virtually a slave driver when it comes to rehabilitating. I've been here since 6 o'clock this morning. Oh, rehab. you ain't been here in two months. This is the first time I've seen you since you got injured, man. That's been three weeks ago. I said, what happened to your tea? You don't even come around and say hello or nothing. No, I'm not here working out. Oh, I'm telling you, man. man. You drinking beer and watching the women aerobicize and shit. Aerobicize? Oh, that's good for the mental state, though, see? I can be mentally ready to play. The game of football is a funny game, you know. Uh, once you're hurt and you can't help a football team, that goes from college 
from high school to college to the professional leagues, you are, you become nothing. And they, they, like they say back in the old days, you're a piece of meat. Man, you can really believe that. Believe that, because that's how it is in football. Shake it up on the play, number 51, Kelly Kirchbaum. Get kicked, get hit in the back, hit in the ribs. They punch, they gouge, they hit you, they dive at your knees. You just got to be able to take it. They deliver a heavy blow, but I've been around enough now that they have to kick my ass. <laughs> oh, man. But this isn't good. I don't like my men being on the field without me. Without me. When a team's on a losing streak, the last thing it needs is a rash of injuries. But somehow in football, that's usually how it seems to work. champions and we'll be in good shape now don't do anything stupid don't do anything irrational and that includes getting in a punching contest with a bunch of cheap assholes over there which is what they are they got the class of a snake that ought to piss you off i don't know how many of you saw it mcclellan's trying to help the damn guy out keep him from falling over backward in a pile and somebody turns around and punches him in the goddamn face bloodies his damn nose I don't know about you, if you fuckers got any fight in you, that'd piss me off and go out there and whip somebody's ass between the whistles. And when the game's over, if they want to play rah-rah, we'll point to the scoreboard, we'll load up the bus, we'll go drink some beer and celebrate. Okay? Good enough? the whole joint up. Now we're just a common average team that's got to crawl our way back to try to get in this thing. They dominated our ass out there tonight. And we helped them. We coughed the ball up, just played pitiful. And, uh, you know, shit. If there's one guy in this room that didn't screw something up at one time or another during the course of the day yesterday, in some phase <coughs> of the game, stand up. We'll give you a round of applause. Anybody? Shit, I'm going to sit down because I probably screwed something up too. The point is, everybody screwed something up. Somebody did something wrong. So we're all guilty. It was a team loss, and we stunk up the place throughout the afternoon. Now, if you're hurt, sometimes that happens. But if you're hurt because your body will not withstand pro football on a week-to-week -week basis, then that's the same as not having enough ability. Get this thing turned around. The bandits were getting a little desperate after three losses in a row. Athletes can be rather superstitious, you know. And there's no telling what a fellow might do to try to turn things around. Well, 
Well, I'm not a professional, but you know. I know that's what I am. Little clip about a breakdown about right now. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, baby. You know something good happened to me today, man. You know that? You remember Coach George is coming every week, you know, getting $10 a pound, weighing me, man. You have everything over 300 man. Hey, man, Coach Spurrier called me in his office today and, like, said, yo, no more fines, man. You talking about, hey. I know you was happy to hear that. I was happy, baby. Give me a kiss, baby. Golly. Hey, man, give me a piece of pizza, man. I'm ready. Give me a big slide. Hey, you man. Hey, plane, all up. Yeah. All right. Oh, you going to celebrate now, Mm. Mm, mm, mm. It took almost two thousand dollars from me, home. Huh? Bet that'll buy a whole lot of pieces. Uh, uh, it might buy the friends and business ain't pieces, huh? Ah, <laughs> that's good. Mm. As most of you guys know, uh, Mr. Bassett's been quite ill and so forth. Hadn't been around for four or five weeks, and mm -hmm. Ralph Campbell's running the, the show over there now. Mm -hmm. Well, with Abbott, most of you know these two guys, so I'll turn it over to Ralph now, and maybe he can fill us in on a few things. Thank you, Steve. John Bassett's health is uh, certainly worse than we, we would like for it to be. He probably won't be down here for quite some time. He's undergoing uh, various treatments uh, to see if uh, he can take care of his problem, and, and hopefully he can. We will do everything we can to keep this franchise as a unit in Tampa. As far as the decision is, whatever decision we end up making, of course, we'll have his input completely. I, don't misunderstand me. But under the treatments that he's going through, there are days when he's just, he's just out of it, uh, unfortunately. They're, he's so doped up, he, he really he can't even make a decision. He can't talk to you. They put you on drugs. They've done what they can do. You wait for three months and see whether it was fixed or whether it wasn't fixed, and either have an operation or you don't have an operation. That's the way it is now. It's a little less than 50-50. Steve, have you had much contact with John Bassett lately? He's keeping up with us, pulling force. And, uh... You know, he's, he's up there going under, uh, taking those treatments or what have you, and really has no plans probably being down here uh, the rest of this season. At times, it was tough for the Bandits to think about playing football with all the other things they had to worry about. People were making plenty of excuses for them. John Bassett's illness, the injuries, the instability of the franchise. And some people were saying they just weren't that good a team. But if you're a football player, that's the time you most want to play well, to prove them all wrong. Because you don't know what's next week or next year, but we know what's today, right. and we know what is coming up, and we can be the champs of this league yeah. and have a right something on. to remember forever and ever, man. And I've never been a fucking champion. And I want to be a fucking champion so bad. I really do, man. Right. Hey, 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 ain't no two ways about it. It's that win. It's that win. Well, we didn't need that doggone holder. No, I think, Coach. He tripped his ass. Right, did he? Fuck, if we knew how to play by the fucking rules, we wouldn't have these problems. Head, get up on him. You back it up for him. You back it up. Attack the motherfucker, head. Coach, I can't Jesus take no more Christ, You're backing up. Pull back, move. Get in there. Hurry. Come on, John. Attack the fucking ball. Fucking ball. Anybody. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We make the type of mistakes that, 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 that turn games around. We don't make it a bit offside mistakes. Damn it. See what Brodsky did. 
Larry, why do you do that? Why do you do that? You got no chance going outside. Why do you do that? Yeah, he's going to go outside and try to come back in. Shit. Oh, he went outside. Fuck. He's got to get to Willie on the blue slide six. You guys used to have a little pride on this team, but God, I don't know what's happened to you. I can get your ass beat and nobody's even pissed off out there on the sideline. I don't know. You guys should get to talk about it. Boy, you better pull it together. Somebody's got to. Hey, y'all got to get together somehow, man. We're going to try to we're gonna try to salvage this thing, man. It ain't all over yet. We're going to learn how to play football. Yeah, right. Defensive, you've got to stop people for us to do that. Sometimes he makes the field goal, sometimes he don't. Right? Sometimes the quarterback picks this guy, sometimes he picks that guy. If it don't work out, it don't work out. Man, he's fighting with John. He's over there running like he's complaining because game time he don't show up. Man, what the hell's wrong with him? If you want to get the most out of me, you got to deal with me up front. You know, because if you push somebody to the wall and they've got their back against the wall, they're just going to come out swinging. Uh, Phil. Phil, for you. All right, but he'll no, be back, man. Just believe in him, man. But I'm saying yeah. something got to be done. Yeah. But he's gonna be with us, man. Believe in it, man. He'll come I back. I believe that's what I'm yeah. talking about. Right. I seen the guy play. I know what he can do, and right. I know what he ain't doing now. Right. Okay. Yeah, that's why I know he ain't the same guy. Go talk to Pitt. Go talk to John Reeves. Those guys are a bunch of winners. Ride with the winners. I'm a loser. I'm not a team ball player. Right. Hey, man. What's up? Right. You know what I mean? If he comes back, we go all the way. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> You're right. He could be the difference between us being a champion and being a loser. Or also ready. Right. I ain't have to pick. You said it. All right. 
Well, you know what I mean is, well, I think don't worry we're about a different it, team if you're healthy and playing good with us. Don't worry about it, Pity. Well, you know, fighting with John ain't gonna get it. Pity. What goes on between me and John is none of your business. It is because it hurts the team, man. No, if it you ain't. can't deal with that, then you're wrong. No, it ain't. You know why? That's a grown man. I'm a grown man. No, we're talking about football have... team. Wait, wait, what wait. y'all do outside the team is two different we things. We can slug it out. I'm going to line up to catch the pass, and he lines up to throw the pass. That ain't none of your business. Have you been getting your lookout blocks? Have you been doing that? That's your business. You worry about job one, Pity. Hey, man, you're a fucked up dude sometimes, man. Hey, you know you're something? You're fucking wrong. Because let me you tell you something? something. I'm out there every fucking day practicing and playing my ass off. Then you ain't got if nothing I to say to me. If I beat, that's one fucking then you ain't thing. Got but if I ain't giving the fucking effort, then that's another Then you ain't got nothing shit. to say to me, then. I got a lot to say to you. You ain't got shit to say well, to me. Well, no, man. Why you use all these excuses? So what do you want to do? Why you want to use these so excuses? So what do you want to do? I don't want to do nothing. Then shut up, then. You shut I asked you a word, too. You did it. I asked you a question. What do you want to do? That's what I asked you. Well, you want to go downtown? Hey, go downtown. Bring it. Don't send it. I've been downtown before, brother. Hey, you know something? You want to go downtown? Don't it's on you, man. Don't take a shot. It's on you. Bring it. Don't send it, Pity. Don't stand there and let him suck on you. Hey, I ain't going to suck you, Pity. I'm going to telegraph you. Hey, you know something? You've been doing quite well without me. Now, word travels like brush fire around the football team. And when Steve Spurrier heard about the confrontation between Trevelyan and Pitcock, he kicked E.T. off the team. Now, that's a pretty drastic decision. But the way the coach figured, if he didn't want to play for the Bandits, he might as well let him go. As it turned out, it kind of broke the tension at a time when spirits were sagging a little bit. The Bandits had lost four in a row, but there was still a chance to salvage something from the season. Heading into the last game in Tampa, they felt like they owed a little something to John Bassett. Because even if they never played another down of football, he'd given them some precious moments. Like the time he took all the linemen out to a dinner they'd never forget. I want three lobsters, two steaks, two bottles of Don Perignon, and two beautiful crab legs. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I'm going down. down. Oh, man. All the way back. One, two, three, four. All right. Mm -hmm. I got you. That's it. Boy, look at you. Y'all cut up with something new every day. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> hey! Now button up and pull it down. And... This locker room was a little bit different than most. Quiet as a church, for one thing. The bandits realized they could still make the playoffs. And a win would prove a lot to their fans, to John Bassett, and to themselves. This is the game where the coach says, play it like it's the last football game you'll ever play in your life. Man. I let juice run out of the dam. I didn't know it was on there. You all right? Pick up. You doing all right? You ain't doing it right, man. Oh, you fucking know what? You called Chief and Mine, I was mad. Pick up. You better quit spitting, man. You're spitting all over your clothes. I like it that way, man. It makes me nasty. Yeah, when you go over there, you spit over there. Let's fix the man tied right, man. You tied fix, homie. He didn't want to be tied, man. That's, he done want it long. Good, man. Fix the man up right, man. Hey, up, man. Don't be got that under here. Anyway, you got to pull it. Pull it. Pull it. You gotta get some things. Put some hot water and a rag and some soap. You got it there, you got it there. It took 76 days on these hundred years. Next, they got some cheap perfume. Look at it, we can't turn around. Man, you can't do it again. Y'all ready to go eat, man? We got the most important game of our lives because it's the one at hand right here. Let's just play hard, 60 minutes, full speed. Do that. Cowboys the whole time. We've got to do a little Mabel. We've got to do a little Mabel. Hey, hey! What about Big Mike? What about Big Mike? Let's splatter somebody out there. Fuck all this grabbing and reaching and falling forward, forward. Shit. Come on, let's knock somebody back. Okay? Let's establish the line of scrimmage.
scrimmage, Ed, and you guys cover them and say, I got your ass and you ain't going to make the play. Instead of being close, let's make an interception and go for it. Okay? Play underneath it. All right. And then what, what's going to happen there is he's going to have to look around and start going somewhere else, not the tight end. And that's when our other guys that are playing zone and reading the quarterback are going to get the interception, okay? He started something, bro. we got to go out and do it. Suck it up and let's get our ass in the playoff tonight, right? Right. Number 22, Jalen Hurts. Number 22, running back for the Bandits, the singing bandit, Joel Blunt. Coach McGeorge got a few words you want to say real quick here, man. I can tell you I'm psyched. I like most of you guys are. I can tell you in that other dressing room over there, he's telling those guys that we're in a tank over here. We've lost four in a row. It's not the same bandits. That's what he's telling them. He's going to try to jump on us early, make us. We know when we get behind, things have been going, to, going bad for us. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last Keep our composure. We got to go out there and regain the respect that this team has had. And how do we do that? We out hit them. We out block them. We knock the ball loose. That's what we got to do to win tonight, men. Let's go kick their ass. We want to end, we want to end up number one and number one and number one all the way through. Would you care for something? Thank you, Coach. 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 so good in practice and so bad out here. Yeah, I want a, want a double prime rib. How do you want that cook? A medium wrap. Oh, right. <laughs> and I want a, 
Yeah, yeah the baked potato, you know. Yeah. 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 Just butter, yeah. extra butter. What kind of yeah? So you sauteing garlic butter? So, uh, mushroom, mushroom. You got any lobster tonight? Oh, I'll take the lobster later after I finish. Later, after this. He says to take it with freshness, with grapefruit. Straight gin is close. That's close enough. That's close enough. Two hours. You're a fuck, man. Ain't that? Clap me on the back. Me, I'm like a rag. That time. We have three of them. Beautiful baby, beautiful, beautiful. Hey, coach, you want to go X? AJ's getting picked up. Split by and We ought to be in Oki and go Oki play. The bandit nine yard line. Find a little seat to the five. Touchdown, Jacksonville. No, I don't mind. Fuck it. I <laughs> I gotta make a little toast. Quiet, guys. I make a little toast. To the king of the eaters who wasn't here last year, Newt. There's the Newt. Yes. What is your main purpose in life, would you say? Taste every food that the world has offered at least once. So how successful would you say you've been to this point? Well, about 50% of the goal has been reached. Um, I want to make a toast. No, no, no. I want to make a toast, guys. I've never Yeah, cool. Here's a toast. 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 Hey, hey, be quiet, bro. Hey. Hey, guys. The trenches there have been absolutely sensational. You never get any bloody publicity. It all goes to John Reeves and Gary Anderson and Boone and Eric Trevelyan. And you guys are the backbone and the heart of the football team. So whatever the price of the bill is tonight, which I'm happy to pay, we're going to flip. I'm going to flip with each one of you. And if you beat me in the flip, you're getting the bonus of the price of the bill. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now let's play some football, some of you guys. In a football game, there's usually a turning point. A play which somehow almost magically reverses the fortunes of the two teams. When the Bandits recovered a fumble early in the second half, you could sense something was about to happen. Now, some folks have referred to this sort of thing as momentum. I prefer to think of it as the Bandits finally getting around to playing like they are. Check right, Blue G. They all fall off, you got your delays. Tampa Bay trailing 7-0. Reeves with a quick center snap. Drops back to throw. Pass protection. Fires. Kurt Brodsky makes the catch. Maybe there is justice in America. I don't like oh, that. That's the Lord. All right. Even. Even. Tail. My head. <laughs> Rufus, you're next. Pick up, Trump. Call it, Rufus. He's a California guy. He's got a head. You got a head.
Ferreira. If I can only pay you Lord three grand a week this week, I'm saving money. Rufus wants to speak. <laughs> <laughs> oh, tell you. Thank you, Mr. Best, for having me here. Good Lord, thank you. You were your last year. I'm not doing this. That's all the last year. He needs a four pickup. That's right. <laughs> The defense held when they had to, and the bandits won the game they had to, to earn a spot in the playoffs. This was something no one could ever take away from. You gotta be a team, you gotta be a family, and the only way you can win in football is everybody to be together. I love y'all. The better you play, the better we do, the better your careers are, the better everything is. This is the greatest family in the world. Next to my own and home in Toronto, the greatest family in the world. I love y'all. It's so on. It's got nothing to do with you. <laughs> it's so on, Mr. Bass. You know, I love that. I love Everyone feels the rain Another time, another place 
Everyone feels the pain.